The Resolution Foundation released an enormous report on the state of the UK economy, what might be done to sort it out. It's worth just having a look at some of the issues. This perhaps is the biggest one of all. This is showing you real earnings. So adjusted for inflation since 2000, they went up and up and up. And if they carried on in that vein, look, they might have gone up to there. Instead, look at what happened post 2008, something very different. That's basically the kind of flatlining, the stagnation they're talking about to the extent that now there's this big gap. So we're all worse off to the tune of about 201 pounds. Households are now almost 10% poorer than neighbouring France. Low-income families are 27% poorer. This parliament is on track to be the first in modern history where living standards in this country have actually contracted. Errol Graham starved to death in his own home. When his body was found, he weighed just four and a half stone. Errol was a grandfather. He was disabled and suffered from severe mental ill health. He lived alone in his flat, at the time of his death, he had no hot water, no heating, and no income for food and utilities. Look at the gap between rich and poor. So this is something called the Gini coefficient. It's a measure of income inequality. And you can see the UK, the higher these bars are, the more unequal. The UK is much more unequal than many other countries uh, around Europe, particularly Northern Europe, uh, particularly the Nordics. Here, inequality is more acute than other countries. Investment is vanishing, job security is vanishing, and all the while, taxes are going up. Now, over the last 13 years, we may have become a little desensitised to findings like this. But these aren't the concerns of the past. This isn't living standards rising too slowly, or unequal contractions and concentrations of wealth and opportunity. This is Britain going backwards. This government is playing divide and rule. They say that the problem with our public services isn't school budgets being slashed or NHS funding cuts and privatisation. Instead, they tell the British public that their problem is the migrant next door or the disabled person down the road. The attempt is the same, to distract and divide, even if that means punishing the poor and the vulnerable, heaping misery upon misery. This is showing you wealth going up over the years, so it goes higher and higher and higher. Now look at wealth taxes, so the amount we tax wealth and that has basically been flat. And their implication, at least, is that maybe you need to tax wealth a little bit more. It's just one of many suggestions they have in this report. And it's little wonder why they do it now. As the Office for Budget Responsibility makes clear, Britain faces the biggest hit to living standards since records began. And the outlook is set to get worse, with the OVR highlighting that this autumn statement bakes in a new round of austerity cuts, with the real value of government de departmental spending set to be slashed by nearly £20 billion by 2028. Is Britain in trouble? Well, yes, Britain is in trouble. We've been living through a phase of relative decline, what we call economic stagnation now. If you combine low growth that we've had for the last 15 years with the high inequality we've had for 40 years, then I'm afraid, yeah, it is a toxic combination for low and middle income households in particular. Behind these cuts, behind the demonization of the poor and the marginalized is a myth that pervades our politics. The myth that there isn't enough to go around and it's true, Madam Deputy Speaker, that there isn't enough to go around for ordinary people. Our constituents know that too well. Millions of people struggling to make ends meet. More than 14 million people living below the poverty line, including more than 4 million children. And last year, the Joseph Roundtree Foundation found that 3.8 million people experienced destitution. And that's defined as severe poverty, where people cannot afford basic needs. And that doesn't mean just struggling to pay the bills and keep food on the table. It is choosing between heating and eating, a choice that becomes more and more painful as winter bites. So while the majority of people are struggling to make ends meet, it's simply a myth that there isn't enough to go around. Because last year, for example, the wealth of Britain's billionaires grew by more than £30 billion, up to nearly £700 billion. I'm going to break that down. That's seven followed by 11 zeros. Click here for James Cleverley's five-point plan and Yvette Cooper's response.